What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Dilmo Damato. We back with another video. We watching Ultra Vegito. Ultra Vegito kills Beerish. God of Universe 7. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Beerish cooked. Beerish cooked. Um he just he just took out Gogeta. And damn, he gonna kill Weiss? Damn, Weiss is homie. Weiss, Weiss stood by him, man, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see if he killed Weiss too, so. Um, shit. Shout out to, oh, by Call Me Arch, my fault. Shout out to Call Me Arch, and uh, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, let's get into it. So, our story continues of Ultra Vegito in his new mysterious form. Staring straight into the eyes of a nothing short of petrified Beerus. But unyieldingly, with a maniacal smile, Vegito lets out. <laughs> What's wrong, Beerus? I thought you said you were going to make me break more than just a sweat. Where's all that bravado now, Destroyer? Silent in the face of the man who just defeated your beloved students. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> While Beerus, who is still just reeling from Vegito, somehow surviving half his face being erased, just mutters, There... There's no way! Yes way. You cannot be mortal! <laughs> Before eventually from the sheer fear running through his body, Beerus falls on his backside, his eyes not leaving Vegito's as he continues, just tell me, what, what are you? You're I'm that no nigga. saying that's for certain. How, how could anyone, let alone a mortal, reverse their own erasure? Never in all my years have I in witnessed my years. anything like that. At least, not since Lucif. Strangely mentioning a character we'd never heard before up until this point in the Dragon Ball universe, as within the mind of Beerus, a memory of a truly demonic figure begins to arise. Now sweating from just a simple comparison and thought about this Lucif character, Beerus adds, No, no, I should never mention that name again. Whatever you did, it has to be something completely different. <laughs> but Vegito hearing the sudden mention of this random figure, who seemingly is striking fear into even Beerus, immediately piques his interest. As his Goku side comes out, and he inquires, Lucif! Now who the hell is that, Beerus? <laughs> Another one of you pathetic gods I need to run through? Or is it an angel? Either way, yeah, that's the way you're reacting, yeah, ain't no angel. you must be strong. I can't wait to make his energy mine. <laughs> Before instantly, without any forewarning, Ultra Vegito launches his right hand towards Beerus. <laughs> and just like that, wraps his fingers around the throat of the former destroyer with an ironclad grip that could never be broken. Oh shit. As Beerus is then manhandled and lifted effortlessly into the air by his neck, still squirming, but just remaining markedly silent. As Vegito stares, almost waiting for some hint of retaliation, just like he did with Gogeta. <laughs> but eventually, Beerus remains docile and unmoving. Vegito too eventually realizes this, and the uncharacteristic submissive behavior and questions. Not even going to try and fight back, Beerus? Really? That's not like you. Or at least the Beerus I knew from my timeline. Mm. Seems this version of you is all talk and no action. Oh shit. What yeah, you love talking like that? Maybe it's time you return to nothingness from which you started. Oh shit. No use in you using any more of this universe's oxygen. Every dog has its day, I guess. And your turn to be put down has come now, hasn't it? 
but with just the slightest pushback, Beerus finally shows just a semblance of anger, before then letting out, Say what you want, good killer. But I've lived long enough to know when I've been beat. I'm not a battle-thirsty Saiyan like Goku or Vegeta, and I refuse to embarrass myself against a foe far stronger than I. Just okay. take my energy okay. I respect and kill it. as you plan. But before you do, just tell me one thing. Tell me how you were able to reverse your own erasure. The destroyers Hakai. Beerusama. But before Beer anything Sama. could be said in response by Vegeta, from a distance, Whis himself reacts in terror to seeing Beerus imminently about to be destroyed. Let go of him, demon! You may have slain my brothers and sisters, but I will not allow the same fate for this universe. Ah! Instantly then beginning his own attack on the unsuspecting few Saiyan. <laughs> Whis! A look of anger doesn't come across Vegito's face, however, remembering internally the soft spot he has for Whis out of all the gods, the only one who eventually saved him. I thought, I don't think you would kill Whis. Old friend, I know this version of you may be confused now, but trust me, this is for the best. I suggest you cool down for a little while. Before then mysteriously waving the fingers of his left hand upwards. Huh? No, no it can't be! Lord Belmond! As shockingly, despite being kicked straight in half earlier by Beerus, the ghostly apparition of Belmond still remains grabbing onto Whis's foot, as if now immortal by Vegito's energy alone. <clears throat> Whis, looking down from the corner of his eye at what was once one of the 12 divine destroyers of the multiverse, is momentarily held still, thinking in uncomfort, if I let this go on any longer, is this, is this ungodly husk what Lord Beerus will become too? Yep. <gasps> what? But regardless okay, Mary, of whether this would become Beerus' destined fate or not, right before the angel, two more of Vegito's summonings teleport to block his path. These two being two more of the God Killer's victims, Ketela and Whis's sister, Margarita. Oh. The added sight of now even his sister in particular brings about a blue hue on even the blue-faced Whis, as he, just like Beerus, begins to be reminded of a certain figure. Thinking inside, This power, these abilities, this is complete blasphemy that should not exist. Beerus Sama has never been more right. This kind of evil and unholiness has only ever been seen once before. Oh shit. Only by... Him. As we too see within the angel's mind, yet another demonic representation of a maniacally smiling figure. <laughs> and ironically, as the scene moves back to Vegito, he too is now smirking demonically at Whis and says, <laughs> Chill out, will you, Whis? For someone named after Whiskey, you aren't very laid back, are you? Damn. Relax. Beerus is already in my hands. And you know all too well that the moment I close my grasp and break his neck, you'll lose all your powers anyway. Don't you, Whis? Huh? How? Of but of course, course you know. once Whis hears this come out of the God Killer's mouth, he can only wonder and fear. How could a mortal know that? Information available only to the gods. Or is that just something he figured out after slaughtering the destroyers? Vegito, now done of his interaction with the petrified still Whis though, then turns his attention back to Beerus, saying, 
<laughs> Sorry about that. You gods never seem to have any manners, do you? <laughs> but back to your this question. This nigga is evil. I guess I can show you some mercy and grant you your final request. To which a now almost biting his tongue in annoying spirits responds. <laughs> How gracious of you, God Killer. And with that, Vegeta then begins to explain. Say Let me think about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it real quick. Beerus low key, high key got beat by the weakest version of this Vegito. The weakest version. Which I mean, Vegeta was strong as hell. But he did get beat by the weaker version of this. You know what I'm saying, Barry? What you you weak as hell? He got that's crazy. We that's, that's crazy, Barry. You may not know already. Just like non destroyers can also wield a Hakai, it's possible for any destroyer, or even mortal for that matter, to push back a Hakai if it's weak enough, or if their own power far exceeds the user. But that is only as the Hakai is happening. Before it has erased anything. I still remember one time that Punk Freezer hit me with one. I think it was given to him by Cedra, but I survived regardless and unscathed, just through sheer power alone. That was my first experience with understanding the abilities of destruction. But once a body begins to erase, you'd be right. There is no coming back, not unless a time ring is used. When Rumchi erased me not too long ago, I let him destroy almost my entire body, just so I could test the abilities of the time ring. Damn. And it worked like a charm, but not without a little sacrifice. I figured out that every time I did this, the time ring I would use would become far weaker, more brittle on my finger. And so when I used it against you, it eventually erased in return for saving me. Seems each time ring only allows me two uses when it comes to escaping death. Okay, Whatever I know that. It be. And now I only have four rings and eight lives left. I planned on saving Are you all five cat? for the Grand Priest and Zeno, but now I'm one life down all because of you. Just another reason why I should be taking yours right now. <gasps> the, the Time Rings have that ability? How could a Saiyan discover such a thing that the Kais could not? Lucifer. Could he too have? Oi! Stop daydreaming, Scooby! I didn't uh, just I tell you, you that Scooby is crazy. Now that I've been open with you and told you my truth, I expect the same in return. Let me just get an audience first. Huh? As Vegeta then looks towards the direction of two familiar figures in the distance. And as we zoom in, with none other than God of Destruction GT Goku and GT Vegeta. Still unconscious on the ground after having just been defeated by Ultra Vegeta. Alright boys, wakey wakey. Uncle Beerus has a story to tell. As instantly, Vegeta then lifts his arm and in the distance, both Vegeta and Goku raise in the air. Huh? Wait! What are you doing? Leave those two alone! It's me who you want, is it not? But as we zoom in on the two lifeless bodies, Vegeta persists as each of them becomes coated in a strange purple aura reminiscent of Vegeta. Oh, shit. Slowly but surely, coming closer and closer to Beerus. Huh? What? You two! Until eventually they reach just where the duo are, and the energy coating them disappears. <laughs> Finally, we're all back together. We're like a big old happy, happy family. family boy. In fact, this nigga is now a you can minute. watch 
as I give these two weaklings a little present. What? No, you wouldn't. Don't! He will. <laughs> he will. But regardless, without a hint of hesitation, Vegito fires off callously a ball of powerful energy. Damn. And as it strikes on the two helpless and unconscious Saiyans, neither Goku nor Vegeta utter a word, as they become enveloped in a light and appear by all accounts to now be in the process of being erased completely forever. <gasps> but inexplicably, mid-attack, both Goku and Vegeta suddenly open their eyes, perhaps subconsciously trying to survive or could it be something else? <gasps> Kakarot! My energy! It's back! Uh, yeah. You're right, Vegeta. What happened? But eventually, now standing, completely conscious, and feeling rejuvenated, it is instead revealed that Vegito in classic DB style had given the two some of his power to revive them. <gasps> Vegito! But eventually as the two look up to see Ultra Vegito still standing there and with Beerus in his grip no less, the two are quick to get back into fighting stances not knowing it was him who even brought them back. Vegeta! He's still here! And look, he's got Beerus already! We need to do something! To which Vegeta quips back, don't have to tell me something that obvious, Kakarot. I'm ready. Well, I ain't ready for that nigga, though. I gave you guys just enough energy to barely talk. And you really think you're going to stop me? Get real. Before suddenly, Vegito closes his fist unceremoniously. <laughs> Leading to Goku and Vegeta, instantly then slamming their arms down to their side fixed in place oh, like shit. statues yeah, this is different. under the complete control of Vegito. As Goku mutters out, What is this? I can't move my body. Uh, that guy. I think his energy is causing this. Damn it. <sighs> Only bright side is at least. I'm not fused with you again. <coughs> Ultra Vegeta, meanwhile, though, watches on at how helpless the two are smirking, before saying, Now, now, boys, no need to fidget. You won't have to be here too long. Beerus will be short and sweet with his story. The story of Planet Vegeta's destruction. <laughs> <gasps> Planet oh, shit. Vegeta! What are you talking about? Leaving Vegeta, of course, now more intrigued than ever. <sighs> As Beerus, who now seemingly accepts the dire situation and relieved at least that Goku and Vegeta were not erased, then lets out. Fine. I'm done with all of this. I will tell you the truth. Tell the truth, nigga. And just like that, with no other choice, Beerus then began explaining the true story of his involvement with Vegeta and the Saiyans from the beginning. Yes, it is true. It was I who ordered Frieza to destroy planet Vegeta. It was I who ordered the death of all five million men, women and children who occupied it. And I did it for my own gain. The Destroyer's final goal is to seek out and create the next god that will rule. And you, Vegeta, were that candidate. You were always meant to be this universe's next god. Damn. If destroying your entire species was the way to do it, then that is what I would do. And I would do it again. That's a fire backstory. Yes. That means that you too, Goku were never even supposed to exist. <gasps> Almost immediately, the two Saiyans are then left shell-shocked by this information, with these two versions of Goku and Vegeta having never heard anything remotely close to this yet in their timeline. But, 
Beerus! No way! Maybe Vegeta was right about you! You are a demon! <laughs> you! You lied to us, you damn cat! I trusted you! I introduced you to my family! And you were the one responsible for my family and mother's death! <laughs> Simultaneously, uh, they a little the mad. Okay. The moment, both Goku and Vegeta begin to feel rage build within them as they realize that maybe it wasn't Vegito who was their enemy after all, and that this god Vegito had come to warn them about was just as dangerous as he had said. <laughs> A burst of energy. Unable to control themselves anymore, the two break free from whatever was trapping them and begin to surround themselves in lightning as their power levels spike and their destroyer garbs rip off, as if symbolically representing their resignation from being destroyers anymore. <laughs> What's this? But Vegeta noticing this can't help but think, they should be barely be able to move. Yet they broke you know better, you know better than this, Vegito. <laughs> I guess you can really never underestimate a Saiyan's rage. You should know this. You should know this. But regardless, now knowing that Vegito and Goku were now rightfully back on his side, Vegito turns to Beerus and says, Well, looks like you don't have many fans anymore, Beerus. Welcome to the club. <laughs> But if no one has any more complaints, I guess it's time I added a new god to my victim list. For your crimes, for being complicit in erasing my home planet like it meant nothing, you will pay Beerus. Uh, and the this killed time, there. it will be no accident. To which Beerus, looking down with a face hued with fear, just gulps and remains silent. Awaiting his fate. <sighs> Before just like that, seemingly being a man of his word, Vegeta begins forcefully absorbing the destruction energy straight out of Beerus as his eyes close and his head sinks further and further down into unconsciousness and ultimately death. <gasps> Until in an unexpected twist, Vegito just lets go with both what? his arms, as the now weakened Beerus, in a confused state, just falls slowly. <laughs> Before landing on one knee, as if barely left with a percent of energy, muttering, <coughs> What? What is the meaning of this? Why did you stop, God Killer? To which Vegito, who no longer even needs to look at the former destroyer, stares into the palm of his hand and cryptically lets out, I've taken what I need. That's why, Beerus. You are no destroyer anymore. Your Hakai energy is all mine. And I have no reason to kill you personally, as I am not the one you wronged. The Beerus of my timeline is the one who wronged me. And he has already died by my hand. Your fate should now lie in the hands of those two. Oh, and shit. with that said, Vegeta then proceeds to nonchalantly walk towards the still cautious Goku and Vegeta, leading to Vegeta calling out, Kakarot, stay sharp, he's coming! <laughs> And not knowing yeah, what I ain't doing to do, shit. Stop it. Yet again, the two Stop get it. back into fighting down. positions. As if that would do anything to Ultra. So Vegeta. we can put but Goku in his grown body? Saying, just as ominously as ever, lifts his hand up slowly and begins saying, Still wary of me? <laughs> I don't blame you. After all, I need your power too. Before with a more relaxed face, Vegeta reveals, but not in the way I needed, Beerus. As Gogeta, you are a true rival to me, and strength like yours is just what I will need 
when I eventually faced the Grand Priest in Zeno. You know my story. I don't need to repeat myself. Oh, shit. And having just heard what even your beloved Beerus did, you know too that there is no more place for these gods to rule over us. Like insignificant beings that can be erased whenever they deem fit. Join me. Give me your summoning button, and when the time comes, battle together with me like we first planned. Huh? Join you? After you nearly killed us? You've got to be kidding. Kakarot, don't listen to this clown. Don't listen to this. It could easily be another lie. But Goku, despite Vegeta's words, looks into Vegito's eyes and reacts entirely different, saying, So, that's what you want. So you're going to one day fight this Grand Priest guy. And you want our help? This he Grand must be Priest pretty guy. strong then. And if he's strong, then you can count me in. Okay. Goku. As Goku then reaches into his sash, and takes out the summoning button that Vegito requested, the same one all destroyers are given. And so with the button in hand, GT Goku then stands with his arm outraised towards Vegito. Until finally, the two saints shake hands with Goku looking and saying, the next time you see us, you can bet we'll be a whole lot stronger. So after we're done with that priest guy, Get ready for a rematch. Okay. Which a smiling Vegeta responds. <laughs> you got it, Kakarot. And so with a new ally gained and Beerus's power absorbed, Vegeta opens up another time portal and waves his hand in the air saying, finally, see you both later. Try not to go too hard on the old kitty over there, will you? Leaving Goku and Vegeta to say goodbye back, and <laughs> Beerus to immediately look more worse for wear than ever before. However, the scene then changes to one from a few weeks in the past, looking over a strange new planet. But as okay. we zoom in, three familiar figures are spotted. Oh, shit. One saying, Kaba. Oh, God and the other angel. It is then that we see in full Chapa. Lord Chumper, the brother of Beerus, with his hands on the back of his head as he complains. Hey kid, just how slow do you plan on being? We've been walking for ages. Call him out now before I do something I regret. Hey, which the up. young cabber nervously replies, uh, I don't think he'd like that too much, Lord Chumper, but I promise you, we're almost there. And Bados, watching the two interact, then adds, Yes, my lord, try not to push our young friend here. After all, he is doing us a favor. We shall meet the king in due time. Besides, I think all this walking is good for your weight loss. Oh, shit, shut your head. <laughs> Funny, Vados. Very funny. Leading to the angel breaking out in laughter as Chumper comedically makes a bratty face back at her. It's not long after though that eventually the trio reach the doors of a large castle and open its huge and regal doors. And as Chumper's face peers through, he comments, Finally! Now where is my trump car? That the trump car, hold on. And inside, looking king remarkably Sadala. unimpressed, is the king of Sadala, sitting with his head resting on his fist, and on top of a throne encrusted with what seems like skulls, perhaps from his own victims. Chumper though, smiling, courteously then begins. Well, if it isn't the famed King of Sadala. It's been a long time, but we meet again. And this time, I have something to ask of. Gods! 
There appears to be a fat stray cat in my throne room. He on your head. He on Remove your head, Chopper. Remove him at Chopper. once before he pees everywhere. He on your head. He on your head. He on your head. What? Leaving Chumper completely gobsmacked as he hears the king's interruption, not knowing if he's joking or not, while a red-faced and embarrassed Vados covers her mouth, trying her best to not burst out laughing. While Kamar, interestingly, Chumper looks just as embarrassed, whole, in a whole completely spot. different way. <sighs> oh god, why must he be like this? He's got less manners than cauliflower. <laughs> Listen, you! Enough of your silly jokes! I need your help! We have a god killer on the loose! And I want the strongest Saiyans alive to join me in battling them! <laughs> but the king, who still remains completely uninviting, just responds back. A god killer? Do I look like one of your ridiculous gods? Why would I care at all for your problems? Damn. Get out of here! You're disturbing my silence, Garfield. Damn. By hearing this, Chopper seemingly finally loses his patience. Angered and now powering up a ball of her kai in his palm, he replies, Why you? Fine. If you want to be so useless to me, then I suppose you and this whole planet doesn't need to be here anymore. Prepare to be erased! What? No, Lord Chomper, please, no! Leaving Kaba to expectedly react in horror. Of course. While the king just remained silent momentarily, thinking on what he should do now before letting out. Do it. Like I would give a damn. I spend all my days in this damn castle bored out of my mind while my men go out saving weaklings across the universe. You think I have anything to live for? Yeah, so that look Do me a favor and erase us quickly, Tubby. I can be bad to breathe anymore. Uh... To which, of course, Chumpa is rightly just left speechless. Stunned into silence, as even his Hakai ball immediately poofs into thin air. See you later. Been nice knowing you. Continuing on his stance of complete indifference towards his whole planet disappearing. Until Chomper, in an act of concession, just turns around and lets out. Fine, I'm done with this. Keep your planet and stay bored. I would have loved to have seen you face the God Killer. You may not be a god, but this battle would have been Saiyan versus Saiyan. In fact, King versus King. Pretty much, yeah. Wait! This last sentence, though, immediately then begins to pique the King's interest. King versus As he King. questions, another Saiyan King? <laughs> Leaving Chumper to now smirk widely as if his plan had come to perfect fruition. Until finally, standing up tall from his throne for the first time in probably hours, King Sadala shouts, Tell me more, Destroyer! Bring me this Saiyan King you speak of. He gonna pull up on you now. He gonna pull up on you. But that was it for today's video, guys. And if you... All right, that was a fire chapter by Call Me Arge, bro. He did this thing on this one. Oh man, I knew he would. Yeah, I can't. I knew he wasn't gonna kill Beerus and uh, Weiss. I knew he was gonna kill Weiss for sure. Beerus, I was kind of like, I don't know, he, he might kill this motherfucker. But, but yeah, yeah. Oh, Vegito, he just—he's a different breed, man. Oh man, they did him dirty. But I can't wait to see him fight the Grand Priest, bro. Ooh, that's gonna be fire, bro. I already know, bro. Then Chopper, I don't know why Chopper about to get cooked too, bro. <laughs> Man, anyways, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Check out the last chapter right here. Check out another story right here, and I'll uh, catch you next time. Peace.